You clicked on it, so you know what time it is. Boom or Bust, Season 1, Episode 10. The show where you design subwoofer enclosures, I 3D print them, and we throw them head to head to see whose is the loudest. Now, as you will know by today's title, the box which we're testing today is an ABC box. This here was submitted by a lovely gent called Paul. Let's see what Paul had to say in his email. In the early 1990s, Paul was working as an enthusiastic young stereo installer and came across the ABC box style from a Rockford Fosgate distributor over in Canada. Now Paul was pretty interested in this enclosure design and started recommending it and suggesting it to all his customers when he was working with Car Audio. A little bit later on down the line, Paul became one of the lead moderators for the DB Drag forums and shared his experience with this enclosure and and his enthusiasm for it and it kind of picked up a quite fair bit of interest and that's kind of how the mass audio enthusiasts became aware and gained knowledge about the ABC box predominantly. So of all the guys to submit and design a ABC box, Paul is probably one of the best ones to do so. So the driver plays into a chamber which is ported to the outside world on one side but also is ported through to another second chamber that is also ported again separately to the outside world. So this is going to be a very interesting enclosure to listen to and to test and I'm very keen to see what the impedance sweep looks like. So let's grab the Dayton Dats V3 this time and see what the graph looks like. Oh, what are we looking at here then? Okay, very spiky looking graph compared to what we're normally used to seeing. Okay, let's start from the bottom. We have the big unload down at 100 hertz, pretty much on the nose. That's where none of this box is loading the cone whatsoever, and it's getting close to being run in free air at that frequency. Okay, but that's fine because we're not playing 100 hertz. The lowest frequency we test is a 1. 50 and a 150 gives us about two thirds of the way down the slope towards the impedance null here, the impedance valley. So we've got 5.6 ohms. So I think that's actually going to give us a reasonable amount of excursion, but still a reasonable amount of loading and displacement from one of these ports. Not sure which yet, because I have not done a bunch of research on this box as yet. The impedance valley here is down at 190, 187. It's a little bit wobbly down there. Could be referred reflections in the box, all sorts of things. But this enclosure is holding that cone dead still. We got 4.2 ohms, very low at 190. And we do actually play 198. That's the next frequency up. So that's going to be very loaded. And I'm expecting it to get pretty loud at 198. From there, there's a sharp incline to another impedance peak up at 227 hertz. Not quite as high as the first, we're up at 9.1 ohms, but still relatively substantial. The cone's going to be doing most of the air displacement up at that point but briefly after that it's a steep decline again to another impedance valley that is pretty much dead in line with the first one very low again so an, another strong cone load down and that is at 320 hertz now the next frequency we play after the 198 is a 270 which puts us right about here again just over halfway down the slope towards the valley and we've got 5.2 ohms so very similar to our 150 so i think again that's going to perform really well we've got a reasonable amount of cone excursion there but still some good displacement good loading so that should play absolutely fine beyond the second valley there's another sharp incline to a third impedance peak up here at 338 hertz but it's much smaller it's down at 5.3 ohms so actually the same kind of impedance as the 150 and the 270 that we'll be playing anyway but the peak doesn't last long and we have a sharp decline and let's see where our 360 hertz is which is the final frequency that we play about halfway down the impedance slope again and this is on the way out of any loading that the box is going to provide to the driver so it's on the way to kind of behaving similar to a sealed box at this level with 4.3 ohms so all four frequencies that we're going to be testing here with this enclosure are quite well loaded we don't have any that are right on an impedance peak or anything like that and i think i think this is going to probably perform quite nicely with that said performance is one thing but sound is something completely different so let's have a quick listen to this in the open air here and just see if there's any funny sound like we've had from previous enclosures where there's any chuffing, any resonances, any distortions and uh, yeah, just see how it actually sounds. Alright then Mr. ABC Box, how do you sound? Let's start off with a 150 hertz. Okay. 
So yeah, I can hear this harmonics on this one, as there often is with this lower frequency. It could just be a trait of the driver, but uh, it's not super loaded down at this frequency. So saying that, I can hear some air displacement out of the ports. Seems to be both of them doing something. Let's see what happens if I cover one. Okay, that seems to get a bit quieter. Oh, wow! Whoa! When I cover this one, it's way louder at that lower frequency. Okay, so I guess by covering this one, we turn this whole box into this whole chamber with this secondary port being the main one. So that makes sense because we're basically massively increasing the size of the box that this driver has at that lower frequency by blocking that one. Blocking this one doesn't seem to do a great deal by itself as it's mostly as a lot of the pressure is escaping out of this one here So yeah, not mega loud down there. Let's try 198 Whoa There's a lot of loading on the cone as we saw as we predicted on the impedance sweep graph. This is holding the cone dead still I could put loads of power into that and it would barely move at all it's loud and potent as well. We've lost some of the harmonics, it's a lot cleaner sine wave. So before, we got louder when we blocked off this one. So let's block this one again. No, we're quieter now. Okay, so... And blocking this one completely kills it. So at 33 scaled hertz, it seems like we're using both of these ports. And they're both important. What about our 270? Oh, that is potent. That is loud. Lovely, clean as well. It's not got many distortions on there from what I can tell. Oh, that, that, that is a beautifully sounding sound wave. Very nice. Quite loaded. Which pause is it using this time? The blocking that one makes it a little bit quieter, but not by much. It's like a very slight difference. I would say blocking that one makes it a touch quieter as well, like touch quieter, not a huge difference though. Yeah, not a huge difference, but a touch quieter. I think we're going to be mostly starting to listen to the cone now. And our 360. Not actually as clean as the 270 to my ear at least. There's some poor noise, I think it's probably using this one. So if I block this one, yeah, heavy reduction to the output level. Sounds a bit funky as well. Oh, when I block this one, it gets a lot louder at the 360. So it's going to be probably using this one mostly. This one's becoming a bit of a hole, a bit of a hindrance. It's much cleaner. As soon as you block this one at the 360, much cleaner sine wave, much cleaner sine wave. So this box is happiest at 33 and 45 scaled hertz. At the 25 scaled, a little bit unloaded, a little bit harmonic -y. At this higher frequency, again, it's a little bit harmonic -y. There's like a hole in the box. It sounds a little bit funky. But between those, those middle ones, between 33 and 45 and around there, sounds wicked, well loaded, and I think that's going to be good a good performer in this test at least. So yeah, as expected, down here at 150, tons and tons of harmonic distortion on the top half of the side move specifically. Watch what happens when I block off this right hand side port. It cleans up the shape a fair bit, still doesn't look great, but it definitely cleans it up a lot. But when we block off the left hand side one, whoa! Not only do we get a massive boost in output, but it hugely cleans up the sine wave shape as well. It looks a bit triangular shape, a bit spiky, but it's uh, way, way cleaner than with both ports open. At 198, this is beautiful, super nice, clean looking sine wave, even up to really high levels. And it's very loud at this level as well. Yeah, nothing visible about this sine wave at all that I can really comment on. It looks almost perfect. Blocking off the right hand side port, almost completely kills all output and the shape of the waveform is distorted as well but barely barely any output with that port blocked with the left hand side port blocks we lose about half the output so we're losing output whether we block the left or the right hand side port here up at 270 the sine wave again looks pretty nice very clean looking sine wave again can't really see anything that i can really comment on in terms of distortion or wave shape blocking off the right hand side port gives us a fair boost in output and still a nice clean sine wave 
Blocking off the left hand side one gives us a slight reduction in output, but again, same wave shape. Lastly, at 360, the waveform doesn't look as nice as it did on the 198 and the 270, which is cool because that's what my ears heard as well. The top of the sine wave kind of leans forward a bit, and it's just not as clean looking. Blocking off the right hand side port gives us a healthy boost in output and drastically cleans up the sine wave shape. Blocking off the left hand side one gives us a reduction in output. I'd say that's easily the most interesting analysis we've had so far going through the impedance sweep and also looking at how the wave shape and the output changes depending on which port is blocked at different frequencies. You can see how this is kind of working and how the ports are interacting with the driver and which one's producing more output at different frequencies. Really interesting. Now how will that translate to music when we're playing tracks through this with various changing frequencies? So let's drop it in the test cabin, let's play my demo mix and have a listen see what it sounds like and also see if it looks or sounds loud. I mean, based on the demo content, I would say we've got a pretty decent performer here, but the meter has the final say. Let's see if it's as loud on the meter as it is in person here. We're gonna start off with our 150 Hertz, which is 25 scaled Hertz with the door open. Let's see what it does. I'm doing it slightly different now. Rather than rolling the tone up and watching for 15 watts, I've already calibrated exactly 15 watts at each frequency. So we're just gonna burp it at each frequency, see what score it does. So let's go. A 141.8 and that is not bad considering this driver is not really well optimized down at that low frequency it was unloading a fair bit the distortion is very high so okay not a bad start 33 scaled hertz now being a 198 this is where it's heavily loaded that's almost exactly the same, a 141.7. Okay, pretty flat so far. This is similar to what we've seen with a couple of the other enclosures, but they tended to drop off on the higher frequencies. So let's see if it can maintain this at 45 scaled hertz being a 270. 132.9, so that's quite a bit less. That's almost 10 dBs down. How does she do at 60 scaled hertz being a 360? 
Oh, bloody hell, that's not looking great, is it? A 123.4, and uh, that was 15 watts on the meter, so I'm quite surprised. It seemed like it was quite louder out in person here at those higher frequencies. All right, let's close off the cabin door, test one more time with door closed. 128.8. 138.7, door closed. Yeah, that frequency, that 198 is so... 128.3, back down again. And a 122.9. So then, Paul, how does your aperiodic bi-chamber box stand up on the leaderboard? We average out a 134.95 dBs with the door open and with the door closed, a 129. 0.68, slotting you in just underneath the Derek V5 with the door open, finally knocking my benchmark aeroported off the leaderboard and in the door closed category just above the Derek V5, knocking the base barrel off the leaderboard over there. So not an amazing performer and I still can't believe how well the Derek V5 is doing on here considering that massive triangle in the port. I honestly th thought that box was going to do terribly, but it's actually standing its own quite well. But I mean, based on the demo footage that I got, I thought it was going to be a lot louder than it actually has ended up being and it was really let down by the 60 scaled hertz score being so low and also the fact that the 25 scaled hertz score wasn't really well loaded by the box i think if the entire enclosure was tuned a little bit lower on the low end but had some kind of something in the box that would help it ring a little bit at like 60 scaled hertz the 360 it would do well because the two middle frequencies were actually pretty potent and did quite well so based on this test would i be building an abc box for my car probably not it does seem to look and sound quite well uh, in the mid range of frequencies 33 to 45 hertz but it's quite big considering it's relatively low output for its size and it just has a lot of distortion going on on the lower frequencies and it's not particularly great at the higher stuff either it has quite a sharp roll off on the higher frequencies i would be super interested actually at some point maybe to test this box again but block off each of the ports at different frequencies and see whether it's louder with one port blocked off across the board than having both of them open. Like, <laughs> would it actually be better to not be an ABC box and just be uh, ported of some kind? That'd be really interesting to find out. But as far as this contest goes, the boxes which seem to perform the best with this driver, and I think the driver's got a lot to do with it, are enclosures that have a sealed chamber. So like fourth orders and these kind of fourth order -y horns that we've had so far. And I think one of the reasons for that is just to prevent it rolling off so sharply on the lower end and also to give the cone some kind of air spring some kind of actual suspension air suspension at the higher frequency where it really doesn't enjoy playing that it's got a pretty low fs the next enclosure that i'm planning to do which should be on sunday provided i get round to it is going to be interesting you're going to enjoy it and i think based on what i've just said it should perform pretty well it's going to be quite big as well so yeah if you're keen to check that out, then make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that episode. And if you think that you can design an enclosure to top the Boom Status leaderboard, then by all means, send in a design. All the details and instructions for submitting a design are in the video description here. All the TS parameters and the calculations, everything you need is there. Maybe someone can finally break the 140 dB average. We got very close with the Fibonacci fourth. And if you're interested in sponsoring this series somehow, maybe some kind of logo on the test cabin here or a sponsored message or segment then there is an email address in the description as well so check it out hope you're enjoying the series guys and uh, until next time have a great week and we'll see you then